Off the hands have been shaken, and it looks like Ryan Miller is going to be starting us off here. Mew EX in the active, very good Pokemon, because you get a little bit of extra cheeky draw, and of course, free retreat, so it works as an excellent pivot, and we get the Teal Mask Ogapon straight down. Do we have a Grass Energy? Uh -oh. We don't! <laughs> this is a poor hand for Ryan. Not a good start, Joe. No, it's not what we're after. Nicholas is already <laughs> breathing a sigh of relief, whose hand is a little better, Still no energy either. Is going to get some Pokemon established. We see that Buddy Buddy pop in. There's also the Frigibax in hand. And I think there was an Irida there as well. So we should be off to a good start for Nicholas here, who's going to do a pretty traditional uh, search through the deck here, checking up on those Pokemon as well as those energy cards. The Iron Hands plus Lightning Energy combo is in the list, but it may not be that important in this matchup. No, it's, it's hard because there's not many Pokemon that really are in range of that Ampu very much, which is really what that card is in there for. So we've checked the basics here. We've already got one Badoof down, and we've got a Frigibax in the hand as well. So you can have double Badoof, double Frigibax if that's what you're after. And then, of course, you will need probably at least one Chen Pao, and that Raiding Greninja, always a good option early in the game but of course cannot be searched with a Buddy Buddy Poffin. We have a very nice Irida lined up as well for Nicholas can get Radiant Greninja as well as the Earthen Vessel. If Nicholas wishes, could also use this Earthen Vessel to find a Water Energy, retreat this Bidoof into the Chen Pao EX, which is in hand. Then we can get even more Water Energy flowing via Chen Pao EX, and then we can continue to draw with Radiant Greninja. So Nicholas has a couple engine Pokemon already established. Isn't too concerned about an attack coming out from Ryan next turn, although it is possible because energy switches are within the list. Maybe even the Ogapon itself could get an attack in with Myriad Leaf Shower. So something that Nicholas does have to be aware of here. Yeah, it's something you are worried about. You do need to question how much does Nicholas know about Ryan's deck? They have been playing up near each other for the past few rounds. Mm -hmm. Generally, when you get this late in the tournament, you have a, a pretty good bead on what the other top players are playing. Right now, it does not really look like a Red Drago deck, <laughs> but if you've had a little bit of a spy, People do tend to be talking as well. Your friends who have played against particular Ooh. players might give you a heads up. Interesting, going for Ultra Ball instead of the Earthen Vessel here. Maybe it means Nicholas is going to have a slower turn and just hold off, save this Ultra Ball for Bit Barrel on the next turn. I think that's probably got to be it. You don't need any more basics. You've got your Raiding Greninja, you've got Chen Pao, you've got a second Frigibax. You absolutely do not need any more basic Pokemon. So if you hit a rare candy, you get your back Scalibur, but I think the engine here is what's important. You already yeah. said it. There's not many supporters in the deck, and two of them are prized, and one of them has been used. So having that B-Barrel there to draw extra cards from the beginning of next turn is going to be a pretty big deal. So we have got double Frigibax, double Bidoof. There's your Radiant Greninja. No energy yet. Yeah, that's the only thing holding back this hand, to be honest with you. So Nicholas is going to be, had the option of the Earthen Vessel, which would have unlocked a few cards here, but deciding not to go immediately into a Chen Pao EX and just put it in play instead and just hold the rest of the hand. Does have Candy Bats Calibre, I believe, oh, yes. next He's turn. Just spotted that as yeah, well. There is. So Whatever you top deck, you watch all that away and draw a fresh five cards after candying backs. That feels like a good start Ooh. to the turn. Yeah, having a back scalibur and then a fresh hand of five with the B barrel yeah. there. I can think of worse ways to start the game. <laughs> so we pass over to Ryan, who really needs a Red Drago or no. literally anything at this stage. Are we going to burn Prime Catcher just to try and buy a turn here? Because that is not what you're using Prime. We've got Ogre we have, Bomb. We do have Professor's Research in hand. So it's really okay. just about using the Prime Catcher now to maybe disrupt a different Pokemon. Maybe you get rid of the Radiant Greninja just because you know it's drawing cards. But you also know that Nicholas didn't have any energy. So yeah, we're just going to discard this Professor's Research. And it's a clap from Nicholas straight <laughs> away. But do bear in mind, that card may not be gone for good because the Legacy Star can still recover cards from the discard pile via the V-Star power of Reggie Drago. So keep that in mind. It may not be gone for good. Yeah, this is actually one of the few decks that can casually get two uses out of their ace spec. So we do see a Gudra coming down there with an Earthen Vessel, just searching out the energy. Gudra, of course, discarded with the Earthen Vessel, just to be clear. Getting a couple of energy down. One can be attached. One can be attached using the ability. Could even, if you get a second... Ogre Pond, energy, energy switch, could KO the Badoof. Seems like a lot of effort here. You really want a Red Drago V. 
There could have been a hilarious line from Ryan with enough energy switches. You could have attempted to prime catch it up Greninja and then copy it with Mew EX, <laughs> but that would have required a lot of combination pieces to come together. You would have to find another Ogre Pond and multiple energy switches as well as your turn attachment onto the Mew. That would have been the dreamer play, but Ryan didn't go for that line. Instead, it's going to look for a more traditional setup and try and find some Reggie Drago V here. And we that's a nice pickup from the Ogre Pond Teal Dance did find a Red to Drago V, which is exactly what we're looking for. We do have, oh, this is quite nice. We've got an energy to attach to Red to Drago. We've then got an Earthen Vessel, and we've got a Raging Bolt in uh -oh. hand. But you want Raging Bolt in the discard pile. You want a copy of Red to Drago. What you are you owing, Joe? I'm terrified. I'm terrified that we just have one Reggie Drago V on this board, and we know that Nicholas, oh. with such a... Oh, picks up a second Bib Barrel as well, Ross. That's amazing. So now we can have double Bib Barrel. And we, yeah, well, no, we can't actually Ultra Ball yet. We don't have enough targets for the Ultra Ball. I'm sure it's going to be OK, because you've already yes. got the Bib Barrel going. So you draw three, and wow. then that will give you targets for the Ultra Ball to get the second one out. Which, I mean, you've got to think you want to be doing that, We've right? just picked up Cypher Maniac as well. We can construct a crazy turn here. It wouldn't be much at all now to ask for, for Nicholas to take the KO on Reggie Drago V on the bench. Nicholas is immediately just grabbing the Earthen Vessel and the Prime Catcher. It's such a simple sequence here. You can Ultra Ball out second uh, Bit Barrel and just draw these two to the top of the deck. We're just making sure that's OK. We can use uh, Radiant Greninja as well, so we can Ultra Ball after the fact. Yeah, you don't hold to all right now. That will shuffle those cards back into the deck and completely undo your supporter card. But certainly, if you just discard the energy of Raiden Greninja, you'll draw the two of them. Or how many cards have we got in hand? Can Biberau get both of them? No, so you would yeah. need to... Or you could attach the energy and use Biberau as well. That would have worked. We should be fine with the Earthen Vessel plus the Shivery Chill to access plenty of water here. So Nicholas is going to take a KO on this Reggie Drago V. Such a great hand to hold on to. This is why he held Ultra Ball rather than going into Chen Pao EX, rather than seeing a few additional cards from Concealed Cards, because he got to cherry pick this amazing turn. Yeah. And it's going to really pay dividends now. There is the Prime Catcher onto these only Red to Drago V. Use Shivery Chill to go and get those two energy. And there's going to be at least, and I think there's a couple in hand as well from the Ancient Earth and Vessel. So yeah, you're, um, we're already there. You need four energy to discard, and you've got four energy minimum. This is a fantastic turn two. And as we know, Chen Pao can be this sort of puzzle archetype. And Nicholas has uh, really navigated that opening turn so beautifully and picks up the second bit barrel from those prize Ooh, cards nice. as well. So the engine is only getting stronger from here. What can Ryan do to stop this huge amount of pressure? The problem is, you're not even really getting a KO on Chen Pao at this stage. Mew can't really copy it effectively. Nope. Teal Mask Ogre Pond just does not do enough damage Surely at this not. point in nope. the game. So you kind of need to Red Drago V. The problem is, if you Red Drago V, if you get one of them, Nicholas can just kind of do what he already did. Although, are there actually any boss's orders in the deck at all? No, nope. they're very rarely in these Chen Pao archetypes. You just That's have such a I'm suite thinking. of item cards. You just rely on Iron Bundle and uh, that one-off copy of Prime Catcher. There's not even the uh, Silene that is sometimes seen within the Chen Pao lists. And that's been cut by Nicholas, just trying to streamline the deck as much as possible. So Ryan might just end up having to retreat into Iron Bundle here and find it, whilst also benching a uh, Reggie Drago V, as you say, Ross, to try and buy a turn and offset this prize race. Because Nicholas, you know, if you can't find another single prizer, we'll just be going way ahead in this race. The first step is this Reggie Drago V, though. And we do have a Professor's Research in hand. So Ryan can at least start attaching to this Reggie Drago. And then from the seven cards from the research, we really need to find an Iron Bundle just to put it in the active position here. Because we can't give up another two-prizer. Here is the big Professor's Research. Going to get rid of another V-Star as well. Another thing to keep track of here. Picks up a few supporter cards. I think I did see Nest Ball, though, Ross. So we can send an iron bundle into the active position just to try and buy some time. Yeah, it's not really exactly what you're going for. I love the one Red Drago V. I like we have a Red Drago V. I like that there's no gusting coming Ooh. out. Oh, second Red Drago V. Do you even? I suppose it's still the next attacker coming down. Why are you shaking your head, Joe? I, w I really want a one prizer to just throw in the active here. We know we're passing with Ryan. We just know that that's always guaranteed here. I do not like giving Nicholas a chance to just take another two prizes for free. 
I wanted to just send the bundle into the action and hope that Nicholas had spent their gusting card on the previous turn and couldn't deal with it. And then you're still forcing, you know, Nicholas yeah. gets a prize, but you're still forcing two, two prize KOs. I would have loved to have seen the bundle there. I think that causes much more headache for Nicholas. I mean, there is still a chance to weave that in next turn, I suppose, but I do, I do get where you're coming from here. <laughs> Making that single prize, forcing your opponent into what we generally refer to as the seven prize game. Yeah. Would have been ideal because now look, Nicholas already has an incredible turn <laughs> just right there and has the optimal board setup now. Double bib barrel has one bat's caliber, can start working towards another perhaps, but hasn't drawn great off the first one. Can super cold some more energy, possibly even using that radiant Greninja as well as possible. We still have the shivery tr uh, chill available as well. Nicholas is going to throw away a super rod here, is playing three copies, so has plenty of access to those throughout the game and is going to start working on second bat's caliber by the looks of things with this ultra ball always nice to have a second bat's caliber you only ever really need one because the ability can be used as much as you want but there's always that worry like archaeops in lugia your opponent might try and go after it and go ha, ha 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 now you don't have access to your energy and actually if you can't accelerate all the energy maybe i can make a bit of a comeback it's one way ryan could potentially slow the game down enough to start clawing back in because this game one does not seem to be going ryan's way right now probably going down four prizes to zero Yep, and Nicholas is going to play a second copy of Super Odd here. You can shivery chill the energy straight back out of the deck that you put back in, and it's going to be a Fridgy Bax. Nicholas just making sure that he's not going to run out of any resources here. He knows he's so far ahead and just needs a few more pieces to squeeze over the line in this game one. Just making sure he's doing his due diligence here before a second draw with the barrel. Yeah. I love the double the barrel there. It's, just, it's so much extra, oh, yeah. plus the Radiant Greninja, which now has free energy on. So... Ooh, finds the red candy as well. That's nice. We want that second bat Scalibur. It's obviously something Nicholas has been wanting. Shivery chill for a couple more water energy. And also, low key with this. Firstly, it's lovely getting extra energy in hand, but the less energy there is in the deck, the more likely you are to draw into things like your <laughs> item cards, the supporter cards you're looking for. So I think the phrase often used is spinning is winning. Yeah, and look at this board state. This is the dream of a board for Chen Pao. You just have to figure out the puzzle. And when you get there, you get a, a board like this <laughs> and your strategy is so robust now. Any hand disruption from Ryan, not going to work. And what really can he do? He can try and be tanky with a Gudra V-Star being copied, but that doesn't really sound like a problem for Nicholas. Still has so many superiors remaining, but the resources are incredible here. <laughs> We do see the KO with that Chen Pao taking an extra couple of prizes. And now Ryan Miller is sitting there looking across the board and going, hang on a second, my opponent's only got to take one more two prize KO. And the problem is, Red Drago V Star, 280 HP, it's mahusive. Not every deck can get up that high. Chen Pao can get that high and actually does on a regular basis. It makes this very, very difficult to win from here. We finally see the Reggie Draco V-Star from Ryan. Still hasn't fit the V-Star marker, of course, so has access to essentially the entire discard pile now. We're going to see a quick Super Rod getting back some Fire Energy. I think that's going to be important. Might be a reason to keep one in the discard pile just as a Legacy Star option as well. But it's going to get all shuffled back in. Ryan really just has to hope that this Reggie Drago V-Star can tank for a turn with Gudra, then maybe you can make something come together if you do a Dragapult plus um, Sprinkle play if you finish off this Chen Pao with the bench Sprinkle damage of a Phantom Dive. But that's like a two-turn strategy, and that involves you tanking a turn, which is already going to be very difficult, I would say. Yeah, Chen Pao is a really bad deck against which to try and tank for a turn, because they're just like, oh, you're tanking? Well, just like add an extra energy or two. Yeah. <laughs> I have lots of energy. I will use as many as I need, especially when you know it's one last big KO to win the game. Don't, don't worry about playing conservatively and saving your energy. Throw it all down. So we are finally going to get rolling. Very expressive face there from Ryan. Is it going to be enough, though, at this stage? It feels late in the game to really start getting going. I'm not even seeing a great option for Legacy Star. One of the best plays you could have made would have been an Iono, but we've already played Professor's Research. And I mean, even Iono is bad because there's double the barrel. I don't even know how helpful that would be, to be honest with you. I think literally just a paper thin defense is using Gudra, and it just does not feel great here. No, it really doesn't. Gudra means you take 80 less damage from attacks next turn, which is lovely. But the problem is Chen Pao can go over that pretty, 
pretty easily a lot of the time, honestly, because extra 80, it's extra one or two energy. It's yeah. not that bad. It gets you to 360 effective hit points with that uh, rolling iron, which I imagine has to be the attack here. So it's only actually one extra energy. You yeah. need six <laughs> rather than five. 80 less. Nicholas is going through the numbers now, knowing that he has to hit 360, and I think Nicholas knows that that is not going to be a tough hurdle for him. Don't even get a prize if you're no. Ryan. The good news is that can be finished off when you copy, say, Dragapult's yeah, attack next turn. For sure. If there is a next turn, which I'm not sure there is, there's Spoilers two in hand. Us. <laughs> there's not going to be another turn. Is there a superior energy retrieval? I think that there's would do it. and superior already, so just oh. making sure Nicholas now. And you've got Shivery Chiller so for Denny clear. in the deck. Yeah, he's in the clear. Nicholas just said on the table, we've got it. There, there we, we go. go. There's your six energy, 360 damage, and Nicholas <laughs> takes a 6-0 victory. Super on Shivery Chill. We can hit a squillion. You don't need any more. <laughs> six is enough. Let's make sure. Why, why do the math when you can just throw everything you've got? And that's going to be a very casual 1-0 victory in that game number one. As we do see some prize cards, there's two copies of the Dragapult EX in Ryan's list, so shouldn't be too concerned about the prizing of one of them. But I don't know if we had any ball search, Ross, once again here for Ryan. We've started with an iron bundle and attached to it. I don't know how much is in this hand. I think there's just earthen vessels. If you had a Regidrago V or a way to get Regidrago V, you wouldn't attach to iron bundle. I agree. <laughs> You'd attach to your Regidrago V because that's your attacker. Good news no, is, with four it's... energy switch, you can reclaim that energy, but you don't want to reclaim an energy you attach to turn one. You want to get an extra attachment onto your, your teal mask and then switch it over. But Joe, your head is in your hands. You're not loving Ryan's <laughs> hand. If I'm here. seeing it right, the hand is abysmal. I think it's more other than Vessel. I think it's Radiant Charizard than just, just energy cards. This is such a poor opener. You've got to feel sorry for Ryan. Just had a pretty suboptimal start in that first game. And once again, you draw your opening hand and it's just poor again. We're going to make the Reggie Drago V-Star deck look bad, but Ryan's on a phenomenal record. The deck's been flowing so much better for him throughout this tournament. Is in touching distance of our top cut with that 10-2-1 record so far. But the deck is just not cooperating right now. No, and you do see the difference in records. You know, Nicholas hasn't actually lost a set yet, though there oh, have yeah. been a couple of ties. Ryan, very well, only the one tie, but there are a couple of losses. It is a deck that will lose a couple of sets rather than, you know, some of these <laughs> decks where you do tend to tie a little bit more rather than losing. But you get those big power turns, you get those wins, but it is not going great. And what we're really doing here is just spinning the deck of energy. You play all the Earth and Vessel here. You don't want all that energy in your hand, but you want it out of your deck to maximize the odds of drawing something that isn't an Earth and Vessel next turn. Yeah, you've maximized your odds, but now if you draw Professor's Research, you're going to lose so many energy cards. Don't eat. Why would you even <laughs> say that, Joe? I'm just saying. It's, it's still going to feel awkward. Oh. But you've got to do what you've got to do in these spots. Ryan literally played every card that he physically could from his hand apart from the Radiant Charizard. Let's see how Nicholas start goes for him because Champau is normally much more secure at building a board when it goes second because he just gains so many additional outs to get into the game with your Irida as well as that Cypher, which is, can be triggered via your Greninja on turn one as it can also combo off with the Pokestop as well. So yeah. let's see how the hand is panning out. I see Ultra Ball. I do see Pokestop as well actually there for Nicholas. And I think that's where we're going to begin our turn. Oh, Pokestop, Superior Energy Ooh. Dream, and a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Not a bad start at all there. Yep, that unlocks quite a bit for Nicholas. Of course, you need your Frigibacks to really get that Super Cold rolling. I think there's also the Greninja in hand and possibly Lightning Energy. That's also something that Nicholas has to consider here. Going to go through some routine deck checks as well. You can't get too ahead of yourself. You're in a great position. You cruised through that game one. You don't want to do anything silly when you're staring down just an Iron Bundle. Don't get too excited. Still keep your emotions in check, and that's exactly what we're seeing from Nicholas here. Yeah, it's a nice start with a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Looks like we're eyeing up a couple of Fringerbacks early. There's already a Bidoof in the active, and you know what deck your opponent's playing now, and you just saw they didn't get a Red Drago V down, so you know the chance of even that Bidoof getting KO'd on Ryan's next turn is, it's not exactly zero, but it's very, very close to zero. So you don't feel the need to get that second Bidoof. You can just get the double Fridger backs and just start setting up. You're also not putting on any pressure this turn, 
but Ryan didn't get the basics he wanted. If Nicholas can, that really puts him ahead in terms of the board state here. You can see Nicholas actually plays uh, three Bidoof in the list as well, one of them being the 70 hit point Bidoof. And Nicholas is going to hold off from searching that one out and is just going to go for another 60 hit pointer, the good old carefree ability on the Bidoof there, protecting it from bench damage. Yeah, carefree countenance, yeah. nice little ability there. And of course, with Dragapult dropping six damage counters, dropping a 60 HP Bidoof later in the game would be terrifying. Yes. So save the 70 HP that can survive the Dragapult damage for when you absolutely need it, which honestly you hopefully don't. Right. So this is going to be a pretty decent turn. I think Nicholas can still draw a couple cards from Greninja here as well, if he so wishes. Might just be holding on to Iron Hands and Lightning as well as an option for later, because there is a single prize currently in the active. But I feel like drawing additional cards is good here. Once again, holding on to, I believe, Ultra Ball for the barrel for next turn. We are going to see a couple free cards. No supporter for Nicholas, but still has a decent amount of things coming together. There's the option to Ultra Ball out Chen Pao as well here. You could then attach Retreat to your Bidoof. We drew into another Water Energy, so we can begin to Shivery Chill, and that's exactly what Nicholas is looking at here. Yeah, Shivery Chill, go and get a couple of Water Energy from your deck, get them in your hand. It's, it's better when you've got your Batscalibur to immediately attach them, but certainly getting one so that you can discard it with Greninja is good. You can get your turn attachment before the Batscalibur comes out, if you so wish. Not so important, but always fun. <laughs> Now we see the energy for retreat. Now we see the Shivery Chill coming out. And that is going to mean you do get two extra draws with that concealed card. And it really does feel like Nicholas's turn has been just... I mean, Ryan's going to be envious right now. Oh, 100%. The only <laughs> thing we want, second Fridger backs, I would like to see. Yeah, there could be some combinations with Teal Mask, Ogre Pony X, and energy switches and such. If Ryan was able to randomly grab that uh, prime catcher early on. I suppose that could be the only headache for Nicholas here, but I think those are low odds things, especially when you know that four of your opponent's cards are energy in hand <laughs> right now. The only thing that might help Ryan out here is there is the poker stop for him. That could really bail him out. So not, not just this top deck, although let's see it. Ryan draws. Well, we're poker stopping. <laughs> How about that? You have to poker stop. Your hand is terrible. Well, that's a good outcome. That, that's, that's a poor one. And Super Rod does not help. Oh, there was a Professor. But you weren't going to draw Professor's Research. You were going to draw Hatsui and Gudra as your next draw. So... Did we draw? No. It's a Regidrago V-Star in hand. So all we can do is attach to the Charizard and pass things back over to Nicholas. And this is going just as bad as a previous game went. This is... This is heartbreaking at oh, this and point. And Nicholas top decks Irida as well. This hand is completely <laughs> unlocked now. Oh, You've got the barrel, Irida, candy backs, and then you can get all these energy immediately from Shivery Chill. We are ramping up this damage, Ross. This turn is once again going to be incredible. Nicholas knows that his turn is going to be really strong here and just wants to make sure they're putting themselves in that best position. As you said, another mini goal of the turn will be to get another Fridgy backs down this turn. Yeah. And uh, that means that Nicholas is going to be flying ahead in the prize race once again, and his board state is going to look vastly stronger than Ryan's. Yeah, you say mini goal, I say side quest. <laughs> it works the same. The thing is, Nicholas actually does have a lot of information here. You know your opponent's got a handful of energy. You yeah. know they've got no hand. You also know they play a heavy count of Professor's Research, which will get rid of a bunch of energy you don't really want to. So it's not just your own start if you're Nicholas. You've got a lot of information about just what a pickle Ryan is in. The best card to get out of this traditionally would be Professor's Research. Firstly, one of them just got discarded with Pokestop. Secondly, it's going to be awkward if you do. Is there any way Nicholas can get the Pokestop off the board? I don't think there is. Doesn't look like it, no. Because that would be a fun little cheeky way to go about it as well. The Pokestop does pick up his Suin Heavy Ball and Superior for Nicholas. I think it clogs up the Cypher Maniac. So we're going to go for the Irida instead. At the very least, this is Candy Bat's Calibre. I think we were yep. looking for either a Rare Candy there or an Ultra Ball or a Buddy Buddy Poffin from the Pokestop, and I think we whiffed on all of those. That's one of the only hurdles for Nicholas now. But you might be able to Super Cold so many energy down that you can just announce attacks even if Ryan was able to construct a crazy turn to deal with this Bat's Calibre. Do bear in mind that, again, the Radiant Charizard will be getting its attack cost cheapened as Nicholas starts to take prizes, and there are still energy switches in the list, so maybe if the tables turn for Ryan next turn, you could 
get a much earlier Radiant Charizard than normal. That would yeah. be one of the only things playing on Nicholas's mind because everything else is going smooth so far. Yeah, Radiant Charizard is at least a viable attacker while you're getting set up. Five energy, 250, but four of those energy are colorless and it reduces by one for every prize card your opponent takes. So there's one energy down. If a prize is taken here, then you only actually need three more energy. It's not ideal, but it is kind of doable. Let's see how Nicholas wants to play the rest of the hand out. Not sure if there's anything for this Hisuian. Might just be burnt so we can draw more from Industrious Incisors now. Yeah, if you've got the Pokemon out of your prizes, that is a card which is doing nothing for you. Get rid of it. Go and draw some more cards <laughs> with Bidoof. Oh, well, the, Bebrel, sorry. the hand size is actually massive, so you still can't even use oh, you're miles away, yeah. right now unless you were to spend a superior just for low value and just super cold those back into play as well. Um, Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty chill if I'm Nicholas. Like, ah, chill. Um, I kind of... <laughs> did you just make yourself laugh? I did, totally did. Unbelievable. It'd be quite nice to have a second fridge of Axe. But you've got Baxcalibur, you've got Bibarel, you've got an attack going off, you've got the KO on the board already, you've got your Radiant Greninja. Yeah, you want your second Bibarel there, of course you do. Yeah, you want a uh, fridge of Axe there to evolve in the future, of course you do. You don't need anything this turn. I would like to just super cold some additional energy, though. Even just one more seems valuable to me. I agree. Um, just to be a little bit safer, so you could attach again for the turn, even if Baxcalibur goes. I don't really see why we wouldn't, honestly. I guess it has synergy with the Cypher that's currently in hand, but you already have Superior. Yeah, Nick's going to just hold off and just deal with the 120 with the Hailblade here. I like that. Get the KO. Here comes Radiant Charizard. Oh, boy. It's Let's see the top deck, Ryan. Well, the facial expression says it all. It's, it's a, Dragapult. a Dragapult. We're spinning the wheel. Okay, what do we get? What do we get? What do we get? We get Ultra Ball is nice. We can play the game. Ultra oh, Ball is nice. We're cooking. Ultra that's Ball huge. is nice, but that's an earthen vessel. <laughs> yeah, but we need fodder for these Ultra Ball. We can get rid of lots of those energy that was found earlier on in the game, and then we can rob them back because we know that was one of the terrible top decks <laughs> earlier on in this game. So oh. Ryan finally getting some basics established at the very least. Maybe this. drawing cards with Mew EX this turn is something that could lead him towards a supporter. Teal Mask, Ogopon as well, a means of draw here. While also getting some energy stashed on the board. And I like having energy stashed on the board because you want your energy switch to be live as soon as you draw into them. You don't want to be drawing an awkward two-card combo. You want the energy down as fast as possible, and then every single energy switch you draw into is immediately an energy onto the Pokémon that you want. So you're probably giving up your Radiant Charizard this turn, but at least you are basically saying, well, I've given up two prizes, but I've only, you know, that's two KOs. It's taken my opponent a lot more effort to get to two prizes this game than it did in the previous game. Let's see another draw here from the Teal Dance from the Teal Mask Ogapon X. We're looking for any Pokemon will do just to improve this Ultra Ball. Is that an, Oh, it's the Professor's Research, Ross. We found a supporter now. I love this because you've not played your supporter yet. So get what you can with your Ultra Balls and then play Professor's Research. You've lost a bunch of energy. You've got Super Rod. Deal with it. Just get some <laughs> Pokemon down. Play your Professor's Research. Because we might actually, 30 minutes into this game, see Ryan starting to set something up. <laughs> it's been a long time we've been playing, Joe. It has been far too long, especially from Ryan's side of the table. The deck has not been cooperating just yet, but we do have more draw here. Ryan getting more Ogapon into play. Does play three copies in the list, so it is theoretically possible with enough energy switch to attack with this Radiant Charizard. It would be a wonky combo of cards, though. Well, at this point, you need an energy attachment and double energy switch. That's the combination. And yeah. it would get a two-prize KO. It is not completely outside the realms of possibility. One energy, two energy switch. That's the combo we're looking for. That'll get you to four, and with the prize Nicholas has taken, Four is all you need to get to. I'm not thinking it's that likely, but come on, tell me that wouldn't be a fun way to go about it. We've got to make the play. We, we have no choice here. Your back's against the wall. You need to play to these low odd situations. Spending these energy switches, if we draw into them from this research, will be monstrous. I think you even attach the energy, honestly. Yeah, I love the idea of attaching an energy. Yeah, Ryan wants to. Sees that he's so far behind that this is the only way to swing back into the game. A big seven cards here from Professor's Research. That's at least three retouches. I think that's 
Three of the four research are down now, though, is important Energy to Energy switches, note. where are they? I see Reggie Drago pieces. I see Temple of Sinnoh. And that's not doing much. No. Prime Catcher, is it? Ultra Ball in the hand. We can Ultra Ball go lower and try and draw with Mui X still. Yeah. There's one Energy Switch. Okay. So oh. if you draw with... So get a Mew, bench the Reggie Drago, play the Energy... The problem is, if you whiff the Energy Switch off Mew, that's a lot of resources you've used for nothing. You can prime catch up the bat's caliber as well. That could be the target you go for here. hundred percent. It takes you down to a zero card hand and then you're drawing three here. This could be a big swing in the game. And Ryan's if you take identified out the, it. And there's no second fridge of axe. The side quest was failed. Yes. He main quested too much, <laughs> failed the side quest, and that means that if this bat's caliber goes down, you are potentially in a little bit of trouble. Oh, Ryan literally giving us the and this is the only this go. is the only play. It's such oh my goodness, you need an energy switch in the worst way out of this. Do we get it? Nice jamming tower. Didn't see Nest what it ball. was. No, oh. I don't think we're slamming it. If, if you get it, you slam it there. And there's no other draw coming down. It's just two oh, nest ball. Two nest terrible. ball. That's actually terrible draws. Yep, absolutely terrible. <laughs> oh, that's so heartbreaking that. So now what do you do? Do you leave the Mew in the active? I think you've got to go Reggie Drago V. I think you've just got to give up Reggie Drago V here. You've got two of them, do. right? So you've got to keep the draw around with Mew EX. Especially as you're going to have a low hand next turn. So yeah. And if you lose a Pokemon, both of those Nest Ball are live targets. You can play them. Yeah, you've got to protect the Mew. You don't want to give up the Reggie Drago, but I think you have to. Oh, really? The Ogre Pond, the only Pokemon with energy right now as well. It's going to be a pass from Ryan, giving up an energy card. I suppose you have spent a number of your energy switches already, and that might be playing on his mind. Let's see how Nicholas circumnavigates this. There's a two prize knockout on the table for him, and we know that there's some great combinations already in hand with the bit barrel plus the cipher combo. And we finally found that Frigibax. Yay, <laughs> Cypress complete. Yes, it's also a 70 hit pointer, just like you were saying, Ross, with the Bidoof. Uh, we have also got a 70 hit point Frigi backs in the deck list to also protect ourselves around Dragapult EX that little bit. Yeah, and it is worth noting that we do actually have an energy on there. So that means if you want to retreat, there's a little bit of hope going on here, Joe. <laughs> but if it somehow survives this turn, you do have the energy to retreat that Teal Mask Ogapom. Might be one of the reasons why you put the one with energy up there. You don't really want to give up the energy, but it, you do have a pivot. If you survive, it is a bit low odds, but you never know. I think Nicholas is also holding on to Prime Catcher, oh. and the board is full of great choices. I think the Mew EX might be the take when yeah. Ryan's down to a two-card hand. We've seen how many research have already gone here. I really like taking away the engine. Radiant Charizard, if you take any prizes, that Radiant Charizard has enough energy to attack and will take a two-prize KO. So there is an argument to go after the Charizard here, get rid of the energy and the attacking threat. The only reason to not take Charizard is that if the Charizard comes into the active, you can just immediately deal with it, and that puts you back on even prize cards. By taking the Radiant Charizard now, it gives Ryan the option to super rod this back and reuse it and put him back onto uh, odd prizes. Absolutely fair point. It is Charizard, which is the option. It is Ooh. what I would have gone for, but you make a good argument, Joe, to potentially... We can make a cheeky play, though. We can use Radiant Greninja to attack with as a single prize Pokemon on Nicholas's side of the field and also prep some other damage. Maybe 90 damage onto this Mew EX could be quite helpful, trying to mop that up with a Shuriken later down the line. Yeah, doing a double KO. Well, getting a KO with extra damage on Greninja yeah. is going to be big. Of course, you do hit for that water weakness on the Charizard, yep. and it doesn't have 180 hit points. Yeah, this is another great way to offset the prize race in a different way. You put yourself back on evens and force Ryan to move your single prize Pokemon out of the active position. So Nicholas knows all the tricks with this list. Yeah, it's one of the advantages of playing a deck which has been around for a year. You know what you're doing, and okay, fine, a few new cards here and there, a few new tricks sometimes, but actually, the basic deck, the core of the deck, has been the same for the whole time. Yeah. And you know, yeah, Nicholas literally plays no new cards from Twilight Masquerade. <laughs> it's literally the same list as before, just changing up some basics to respond to the meta. Yeah, going for 70 HP over 60 so that you can survive the uh, Dragapult damage. Yeah. So now we see an What's that? Superior an energy retrieval. Oh, superior energy retrieval, getting all four energy. Three onto the Greninja, one onto the 
Chen Pao. Chen Pao, and it's going to be a KO on the Charizard and well, 90 damage. Plenty uh, more barrel draw to go, Ross. <laughs> the turn has only just begun. <laughs> oh, we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a nice refill for Nicholas here. Didn't pick up too much great stuff, but could be fodder for uh, superiors later down the line. We see another energy to Chen Pao EX as well via Super Cold. Bibarrel can draw one more card. Here's a rare candy, which is not doing a huge amount right now. So there is the KO on the Charizard. And yeah, yeah, 90 on the Mew makes sense because it means that a second Greninja in a minute would actually get the KO on that Mew sitting on the bench. So Nicholas, again, in a great position here. Yeah, up a couple prizes and has spied a new couple ways to take more prizes. Mew currently in the active for Ryan, and we're going to need a lot of draw from that Mew to help us out. We're going to fail the first Nest Ball, then use the second. That's also going to fail, actually. Uh, does that mean we are out of Ogre Pond EX? I think there's a Grass Energy in hand for Ryan here, so you might start with a Teal Dance from one of your Ogre Pond before using Restart from Mew EX. Good news is you've only given up two prizes. This has been a bad start. It's not going well. You've only given up two prizes. There is a way to claw back in here, especially if you can weave in another use of that Radiant Charizard. Yeah. Obviously, Radiant Charizard could turn into a free prize turn if we see Nicholas doing exactly the same thing he just did. That is something <laughs> to bear in mind. Ryan's facial expression says a lot. So there's an Iono. It's going to be a couple more cards. For oh, nice. Picks up the Reggie Drago V-Star. Nice. Then we can Iono. A pretty large hand for Nicholas. And with the deck size, Nicholas is actually going to uh, write down what's going to the bottom of the deck. I really think this is a cool option. Love it. So you know whether or not to reset this hand with other searching cards later down the line as Ryan's going to continue to draw cards with another Teal Dance from Ogre Pony X here. We do have uh, wait, so two bosses' orders in hand. And of course, with Red Drago's V-Star power, which we've not actually really mentioned yet, but Red Drago's got a very unusual V-Star power. Yes. You discard the top seven cards here in the deck. And then you put any two cards, here we go, from your discard pile back into your hand. It does not have to be the cards you discarded Correct. that go back into your hand. Any two go back. So it's one of the very few decks, like I say, that can legitimately reuse your ace spec. Now we do see an energy switch coming in here. Yeah, we have to have one energy switch. There's already one in the hand. And I think Prime Catcher also makes a good amount of sense here. Oh, we might have to get a Fire Energy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just so we can attack with the Reggie Drago. Yeah, it's two Grass and a Fire Attack cost for the Apex Dragon. So you're just going to have to take the single prize KO on the Radiant Greninja, but at least you could be prepping some damage with Phantom Dive onto a bit barrel, perhaps. Or if you're feeling a little bit concerned about Chen Pao's damage output, you could still go for the Gudra here. Yeah, Force a sixth Energy to get the KO. So there is the Fire Energy. We're going to see a double energy switch. This is the engine to get the energy rolling. We've not seen it yet, but with 10 minutes remaining, we finally have seen it. Mew has free retreat. In comes Regidrago, Drago, and all the options are there. Gudra, Dragapult. I lied, there's not all the options there, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the two that are probably the best options. I think, no, Raging Bolt is actually in the discard. It yeah, is in the discard. It's there, but it's clearly not coming into Ryan's thinking. No, it's not what you're going for right now. Uh, and there is Red Dragon V-Star, but there's nothing to copy right. except Apex Dragon, which you already have. The infinite loop of Apex Dragon copying Apex Dragon. Which is not allowed, incidentally. Yeah. We don't do And it the doesn't help loopers. when you're 0-1 down either. <laughs> it would be a terrible idea to just... <laughs> Waste time. Here we like go. That. It's going to be the Hisuian Gudra trying to jump up to 360 hit points and trying to buy a turn desperately here as Ryan is at least taking one prize card in this game number two. Let's see how Nicholas uh, responds from that Iono. Had quite a few cards put to the bottom, but as we know, there's double the barrel established. So Nicholas has so many ways to grow this hand size up and down this turn. Yeah, shout out to Ryan for making it really obvious which attack he was using and making our job a little bit easier. <laughs> so Nicholas is after six energy here. There's already two on the board, so four more are needed. If we get four more energy, we're there. We get the KO on Reggie Drago, even through the Hasui and Gudra, and then... See, it's so awkward. I kind of love the idea of dropping six damage counters on a Beaverel. So you're going for a free prize turn next time and actually would even up at four prizes each. Of course, 
Are you going to have a Red Drago next turn? We've also spent so many energy switches. I think Ryan really just has to hope that this one Dra Red Drago sticks around for a turn. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at here. You need your V-Star and a Fire Energy and Double Energy Switch to get yeah. rolling next turn. And like you say, we've already spent a bunch of energy switch, even bearing in mind the ones that have been brought back using the V-Star power. It is a lot to ask to get a second Red Drago V-Star going next turn. If Ryan's Red Drago can still be there at the end of the turn, if it can survive one more turn, that is a complete game changer, but it is not going to be easy. Nicholas able to earn Vessel to lower the hand size before super colding. And we're holding on to just... Re oh, we're going to keep a water energy around just in case we need to use the Cypher Maniac plus Greninja combo. And we have just found the Cypher Maniac, so that's paying off already. Now we can Cypher Maniac for superior energy retrieval, if need be. And that will guarantee the six energy needed. So it looks like Nicholas has got the KO already up one game to zero, and this is going to put them in a commanding position in this second game. That is Cypher Maniac's code breaking. Yeah, might even be second bat's caliber that we, that we grab here. We are holding on to rare candy pieces. Um, can you do something along the lines of Superior and Super Rod and then Shivery Chill some of the energy back out? There's another Earthen Vessel in the hand here. Yeah, Super Rod's also coming into the thinking. Bats Calibre as well. Basically using this Cypher Maniac as an Irida <laughs> in this case. Absolutely using it like an Irida. And, with, and there is an argument here that you're just discarding fewer cards from hand. Rather than going to discard two cards using a Superior Energy Retrieval, Super Rod the Energy, discard one card with Earth and Vessel, and you're basically in the same position. You've got the energy you need, but you've protected at least one of those rare candy if you need it for future turns. Here comes the Greninja, picking up the two that was put to the top of the deck via the Cypher Maniac's code breaking. Then we're going to rare candy back Scalibur, lowering that hand size. We can super rod some energy, and we have the combination of Shivery Chill and Earth and Vessel here. So many ways that we can get extra water into the mix. Yeah, there's the Shivery Chill, which is going to get those two energy that were just put back there, straight back out again. We're still one energy away as it stands at the moment. Five will do 300, which is normally enough, but because of copying Gudra's attack, you will need a one more energy to get up to 360, the exact number of effective hit points. And we do see Ryan there, it's kind of hoping, yeah. come on, with that last energy. Well, at the very least, Nicholas could still just use Radiant Greninja and take out the Mew if he fails to reach that KO. I mean, yeah, but that's not fun for Ryan, so... <laughs> I think Ryan's hoping that doesn't happen Ryan's either. Ryan's not having, well, he is having fun, but it feels like sarcastic fun at this stage. <laughs> Nicholas may not be showing it, but he's having far more fun. Yeah, now we do see there's no energy in the discard, There actually. is, there is. We've got one. Oh, there is uh, one. And there's a lightning as well. I lied to you. I'm so terribly sorry. It's so, going to be the retreat instead here. And this is going to get the KO on the Mew, putting Nicholas down to two prizes remaining. It's only actually going to do 10 damage to Richard Drago but it is going to KO the Mew, and that is really what we're going for here. Yeah, that seems to be the most important factor of this turn for Nicholas, who has so many superiors left. It's just going to be 90 onto the other Reggie Drago V. That seems a bit more effective than 10 damage. <laughs> yeah, 10 to the active generally is not a great idea, and this actually means that it's going to be just even easier to KO that Reggie Drago. So what what do you really need if, you, if you're Ryan here? It feels like there's so much that you need. You, you kind of need to, you can take out a Bascala because there's another one. Taking two prizes still doesn't even even up the prizes. And you kind of need to take out that Greninja because it's a massive threat. But you only get one prize for doing that. So you're just like, well, what do you even do here? I'm just trying to have a look at resources left for Nicholas. I think there's five water in the discard pile and one lightning right now. One in play, so that would be six of his eight in the discard pile. Possibly one of the things that was holding him back was a number of prize water energy. Ryan's going to go for a boss's orders and doesn't know what he wants to take, Cross. I think that indicates how difficult this turn is going to be here. I mean... Got to be a Bibarel, right, surely? I mean, Bibarel's got a retreat cost of two. Baxcalibur's got a retreat cost of two, but a much better attack. So... I think you go Bibarel here, because at least with Baxcalibur, you can take a... You can attack. The barrel, at least you need to flip, and even then it does less damage than Bat's Calibur. Oof. So in comes the Bat's Calibur with a 60 hit point Frigibax beneath it. Are we going to start getting tricky with Dragapult, or are we still hoping? Yeah, we're still going to use the Hisuian Gudra to get to 360. 
hoping to stay out of range for another turn here is Ryan, who takes the second prize card of this game. But I think Nicholas is aware of the situation, has Irida in hand, got a water from prize cards, I believe. So I think that's going to be all we need here to close out the second game. Yeah, or oh, you just need superior energy retrieval. That's literally it. Superior energy retrieval, you've got an energy in uh, hand, energy on the board. We have the iron bundle as well. That's going to make life so much easier. You can iron bundle and then you can superior and that's going to get the KO quite easily. So Nicholas is going to be going 2-0 up and it's going to be a round 14 win for him. Putting himself on 10 victories, four ties and putting him right in the driver's seat for our top cut. Yeah, there's the superior energy retrieval. There's another four energy. There's way more than enough. And I mean, do Nicholas we, is just carrying on. Going? If Ryan's not going to extend the hand, I'm going to keep <laughs> getting as much damage as possible. Yeah, Ryan is free to concede whenever he likes until he does. Nicholas is free to play the how much damage can I do to your teal mask, Gogapom? Let's be clear, you're already doing 500. You've got an energy in hand. The superior energy retrieval will get another one if you so wish. So you're going to go up to 420 if we go for the whole <laughs> shebang go. here. We and can it... draw the whole deck here for Nicholas. <laughs> okay, so now we've got up to seven energy. That, that is 420 if you so wish. It's the perfect number to attack with, I think. Yeah, there we go. 420 damage, which you, was enough to KO Red to Drago. You didn't even need to yeah. use your iron bundle here. Winning in every way possible. What are we checking? <laughs> Nicholas is thinking I couldn't even get through this, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just pointing out, anyway. like, you, mate, you didn't need the iron bundle. Yeah. You're doing more than enough damage as it is. I'm slightly confused why this game is still going, Joe. We're just seeing how far we can get, Ross. Come okay, on. Okay, cool. Let's can do this. Can we get rid of every single card in hand and deck and win the game with our final attack of the turn? I'm well, totally okay with Ross. this. We can get the iron bundle and bring a different Pokemon back into the active now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I think you got to do it for the style points. I Ryan mean, can bring the V-Star back into the active if he wishes. Yeah, and remember, Ryan is free to concede whenever he likes. He's as into this as Nicholas <laughs> is at this point. And I'm invested too, quite frankly. Uh. If they want to do this, I am totally up for this. We've got a lot of damage being done. Now we're drawing the rest of the deck. Yo. There goes Iron Bundle again. What does Ryan want to give up here? Yep. It doesn't matter, as excited as I sound. And there we see the 2-0 victory <laughs> for Nicholas <laughs> with extra style points. Oh, what a great sport Ryan was. He knew that he didn't really have the best of things in either of those games, but he took it like a champ. It's high stakes Pokemon, Ross. There's a lot of cash on the line. There's the title of international champion on the line.